The concept of a world chess champion started to emerge in the first half of the 19th century, and the phrase, world champion, appeared in 1845. From this time onwards various players were acclaimed as world champions, but the first contest that was defined in advance as being for the world championship was the match between Steinitz and Zuckertert in 1886. Until 1948 world championship contents were matches arranged privately between the players. As a result, the players also had to arrange the funding, in the form of stakes provided by enthusiasts who wished to bet on one of the players. In the early 20th century this was sometimes a barrier that prevented or delayed challenges for the title. Between 1888 and 1948 various difficulties that arose in match negotiations led players to try to define agreed rules for matches, including the frequency of matches, how much or how little say the champion had in the conditions for a title match and what the stakes and division of the purse should be. However, these attempts were unsuccessful in practice, as the same issues continued to delay or prevent challenges. The first attempt by an external organization to manage the World Championship was in 1887-1889, but this experiment was not repeated. A system for managing regular contests for the title went into operation in 1948, under the control of FIDE, and functioned quite smoothly until 1993. However, in that year reigning champion Kasparov and challenger Short were so dissatisfied with FIDE's arrangements for their match that they set up a breakaway organization. The split in the world championship continued until 2006. <laughs> <laughs> Financing of championship contests Before 1948 World Championship matches were financed by arrangements similar to those Emanuel Lasker described for his 1894 match with Wilhelm Steinitz, either the challenger or both players, with the assistance of financial backers, would contribute to a purse, about half would be distributed to the winner's backers, and the winner would receive the larger share of the remainder the loser's backers got nothing. The players had to meet their own travel, accommodation, food and other expenses out of their shares of the purse. This system evolved out of the wagering of small stakes on club games in the early 19th century, up to and including the 1894 Steinitz-Lasker match. Both players, with their backers, generally contributed equally to the purse, following the custom of important matches in the 19th century before there was a generally recognized world champion. For example, the stakes were £100 a side in both the second Staunton vs. St. Amant match Paris, 1843, and the Anderson vs. Steinitz match London, 1866. Steinitz and Zuckertert played their 1886 match for £400 a side. Lasker introduced the practice of demanding that the challenger should provide the whole of the purse, and his successors followed his example up to World War II. This requirement made arranging world championship matches more difficult, for example, Marshall challenged Lasker in 1904 but could not raise the money until 1907. In 1911 Lasker and Rubinstein agreed in principle to a world championship match, but this was never played as Rubinstein could not raise the money, and Alec Hine, Rubinstein and Nimzovich all challenged Capablanca in the early 1920s but only Alec Hine could could raise the $10,000 Capablanca demanded and only in 1927. Topic. Early uses of world champion The idea of a world champion goes back at least to 1840, when a columnist in Fraser's magazine wrote to whom is destined the marshal's baton when de la Bordonnais throws it down, and what country will furnish his successor? 
At present de la Bordonnaise, like Alexander the Great, is without heir, and there is room to fear the empire may be divided eventually under a number of petty kings. A letter quoted in the Times on November 16, 1843, but probably written before that, described the second Staunton vs. Saint Amant match, played in Paris in November to December 1843, as being for the Golden Scepter of Philidor. The earliest recorded use of the term world champion was in 1845, when Howard Staunton was described as the chess champion of England, or the champion of the world. The first known proposal that a contest should be defined in advance as being for recognition as the world's best player was by Ludwig Bledo in a letter to von der Lasse, written in 1846 and published in the Deutsche Schockzeitung in 1848. The winner of the battle in Paris should not be overly proud of his special position, since it is in Trier that the crown will first be awarded. Bledo died in 1846 and the proposed tournament did not take place. In 1850-1851 the forthcoming 1851 London International Tournament was explicitly described as being for the World Championship by three commentators, a letter from a member of the Calcutta Chess Club, dated 1 August 1850, and another from Captain Hugh Alexander Kennedy, dated October 1850, in the 1850 volume of the Chess Players Chronicle, and the Liberty Weekly Tribune in Missouri, June 20, 1851. Although Kennedy was a member of the organizing committee for the tournament, there is no evidence that crowning a world champion was an official aim of the tournament. The 1851 tournament was won convincingly by Adolf Anderson. However, there is no evidence that this victory or his equally convincing win in the London 1862 International Tournament led to his being widely acclaimed at the time as the world champion, although Henry Byrd retrospectively awarded the title to Anderson for his victory in 1851. Between these tournaments Paul Morphy visited Europe in 1858 and crushed all opposition in a series of matches. Harper's Weekly, the 25th of September 1858, and the American Union, the 9th of October 1858, hailed him as the world champion. But another article in Harper's Weekly, the 9th of October 1858, by C. H. Stanley, was uncertain about whether to describe the morphy Herwitz match as being for the world championship. The reign of Wilhelm Steinitz Wilhelm Steinitz's reign is notable for the first recorded suggestion that a world champion could forfeit the title by declining a credible challenge or by prolonged absence from competition. The first recorded instance of a disputed world championship. The first actual contest that was defined in advance as being for the World Championship Ludwig Blado's 1846 proposal came to nothing. The first attempt to regulate contests for the World Championship. Debates about whether the championship should be decided by a match or a tournament. Differences between commentators about when his reign began, which persist to the present day, there is no evidence that Steinitz claimed the title for himself immediately after winning a match against Adolf Anderson in 1866, although in his International Chess Magazine September 1887 and April 1888 he claimed to have been the champion since 1866. It has been suggested that Steinitz could not make such a claim while Paul Morphy was alive. Morphy had defeated Anderson by a far wider margin in 1858, but retired from chess competition soon after he returned to the U.S. in 1859, and died in 1884. The earliest known reference to Steinitz as world champion was in the Chess Players Chronicle, October 1872, after he beat Johannes Zuckertert in their first match. 
but the New York Times, the 11th of March 1894, British Chess Magazine, April 1894, and Emanuel Lasker, Lasker's Chess Magazine, May 1908, dated his reign from 1866, and in the early 1950s Reuben Fine followed their example. On the other hand, many recent commentators divide Steinitz's reign into an unofficial one before he beat Zuckertert again in 1886 and the first official world championship from that time onwards. Steinitz had insisted that the contract for the 1886 match must specify that the match was for the championship of the world. Chess Monthly, January 1886, The Irish Times, the 6th of March 1879, argued that Steinitz had forfeited the title by prolonged absence from competitive chess and therefore Zuckertert should be regarded as champion. The Chess Players Chronicle, the 18th of July 1883, made a more complex argument. Other commentators had suggested that Zuckertert should be regarded as champion because he had won a major tournament, London 1883, 3 points ahead of Steinitz. The Chronicle thought tournaments were an unreliable way of deciding the championship and Steinitz's victories in matches gave him the better claim and that if Zuckertert were the champion, he should forfeit the title title if he declined a challenge, especially from a challenger with Steinitz credentials, and in that case the title should revert to Steinitz. In 1887 the American Chess Congress started work on drawing up regulations for the future conduct of world championship contests. Steinitz actively supported this endeavor, as he thought he was becoming too old to remain world champion. The final proposal was that the winner of a tournament to be held in New York in 1889 should be regarded as world champion for the time being, but must be prepared to face a challenge from the second or third placed competitor within a month. Steinitz wrote that he would not play in the tournament and would not challenge the winner unless the second or third placed competitors failed to do so. The tournament was duly played, but the outcome was not quite as planned. Mikhail Chigorin and Max Weiss tied for first place, their playoff resulted in four draws, and neither wanted to play a championship match. Chigorin had just lost a match against Steinitz and Weiss wanted to get back to his work for the Rothschild Bank. The third prize winner Isidore Gunzberg was prepared to play Steinitz for the title in New York, and Steinitz won their match in 1890-1891. This experiment was not repeated and the 1894 match in which Steinitz lost his title was a private arrangement between the players. Topic: The Lasker controversies. Although Emanuel Lasker defended his title more frequently than Steinitz had, his negotiations for title matches from 1911 onwards were extremely controversial. In 1911 he received a challenge for a world title match against José Raúl Capablanca and, in addition to making severe financial demands, proposed some novel conditions, the match should be considered drawn if neither player finished with a two-game lead, and it should have a maximum of 30 games, but finish if either player won six games and had a two-game lead. Previous matches had been won by the first to win a certain number of games, usually ten, in in theory such a match might go on indefinitely. José Raúl Capablanca objected to the two-game lead clause, Lasker took offense at the terms in which Capablanca criticized the two-game lead condition and broke off negotiations. Further controversy arose when, in 1912, Lasker's terms for a proposed match with Akiba Rubinstein included a clause that, if Lasker should resign the title after a date had been set for the match, Rubinstein should become world champion American Chess Bulletin. October 1913. When he resumed negotiations with José Raúl Capablanca after World War I, Lasker insisted on a similar clause that if Lasker should resign the title after a date had been set for the match, Capablanca should become world champion. 
On 27 June 1920 Lasker abdicated in favor of Capablanca because of public criticisms of the terms for the match, naming José Raúl Capablanca as his successor American Chess Bulletin, July-August 1920. Some commentators questioned Lasker's right to name his successor British Chess Magazine, August 1920, Rochester Democrat and Chronicle, Amos Byrne raised the same objection but welcomed Lasker's resignation of the title The Field, 3 July 1920. Capablanca argued that, if the champion abdicated, the title must go to the challenger as any other arrangement would be unfair to the challenger British Chess Magazine, October 1922. Lasker also announced that, if he won his match against Capablanca, he would resign the title so that younger masters could compete for it. Dr. Lasker and the Championship in American Chess Bulletin, September to October 1920. In the event Capablanca won easily. Topic: <laughs> Capablanca's attempts to produce agreed rules. After the breakdown of his first attempt to negotiate a title match against Lasker 1911, Capablanca drafted rules for the conduct of future challenges, which were agreed by the other top players at the 1914 St. Petersburg tournament, including Lasker, and approved at the Mannheim Congress later that year. The main points were, the champion must be prepared to defend his title once a year, the match should be won by whichever player first won six or eight games, the champion had the right to choose, and the stake should be at least £1,000 worth about £347,000 or $70,000 in 2006 terms. Following the controversies surrounding his 1921 match against Lasker, in 1922 world champion Cop Capablanca proposed the London Rules. The first player to win six games would win the match, playing sessions would be limited to five hours, the time limit would be 40 moves in two and a half hours, the champion must defend his title within one year of receiving a challenge from a recognized master, the champion would decide the date of the match, the champion was not obliged to accept a challenge for a purse of less than $10,000 worth about $349,000 in 2006 terms, 20% of the purse was to paid to the title holder, and the remainder being divided, 60% going to the winner of the match, and 40% to the loser, the highest purse bid must be accepted. Alec Hine, Bigoljubo, Morosi, Reti, Rubinstein, Tartakower and Vidmer promptly signed them. The only match played under those rules was Capablanca vs. Alec Hine in 1927, although there has been speculation that the actual contract might have included a two-game lead clause. Alec Hine, Rubinstein and Nimzovich had all challenged Capablanca in the early 1920s but only Alec Hine could raise the $10,000 Capablanca demanded and only in 1927. Immediately after winning, Alec Hine announced that he was willing to grant Capablanca a return match provided Capablanca met the requirements of the London Rules. Negotiations dragged on for several years, often breaking down when agreement seemed in sight. Topic: <laughs> Fide, U and Avro. Attempts to form an international chess federation were made at the time of the 1914 St. Petersburg, 1914 Mannheim and 1920 Gothenburg tournaments. On 20 July 1924 the participants at the Paris tournament founded FIDE as a kind of players' union, FIDE's congresses in 1925 and 1926 expressed a desire to become involved in managing the world championship. FIDE was largely happy with the London rules but claimed that the requirement for a purse of $10,000 was impracticable and called upon Capablanca to come to an agreement with the leading masters to revise the rules. 
In 1926 Fide decided in principle to create a parallel title of Champion of Fide, and, in 1928, adopted the forthcoming 1928 Bogolubo U match won by Bolajubo as being for the Fide Championship. Alekhine agreed to place future matches for the world title under the auspices of Fide, except that he would only play Capablanca under the same conditions that governed their match in 1927. Although Fide wished to set up a unification match between Alekhine and Bogolubo, it made little progress and the title, Champion of Fide. Quietly vanished after Alekhine won the 1929 World Championship match that he and Bogolubo themselves arranged, while negotiating his 1937 World Championship rematch with Alekhine, Yu proposed that if he retained the title Fide should manage the nomination of future challengers and the conduct of championship matches. Fide had been trying since 1935 to introduce rules on how to select challengers, and its various proposals favored selection by some sort of committee. While they were debating procedures in 1937 and Alec Hine and Yu were preparing for their rematch later that year, the Dutch Chess Federation proposed that a super tournament Avro of ex-champions and rising stars should be held to select the next challenger. Fide rejected this proposal and at their second attempt nominated Salo Flar as the official challenger. Yu then declared that, if he retained his title against Alekhine he was prepared to meet Flar in 1940 but he reserved the right to arrange a title match either in 1938 or 1939 with José Raúl Capablanca, who had lost the title to Alekhine in 1927. If Yu lost his title to Capablanca then Fide's decision should be followed and Capablanca would have to play Flar in 1940. Most chess writers and players strongly supported the Dutch Super Tournament proposal and opposed the committee processes favoured by Fide. While this confusion went unresolved, Yu lost his title to Alekhine. The Avro tournament in 1938 was won by Paul Karras under a tie breaking rule, with Ruben Fine placed second and Capablanca and Flar in the bottom places, and the outbreak of World War II in 1939 cut short the controversy. Topic. Birth of FIDE's World Championship Cycle Before 1946 a new world champion had won the title by defeating the former champion in a match. Alexander Alekhine's death created an interregnum gap between reigns that made the normal procedure impossible. The situation was very confused, with many respected players and commentators offering different solutions. Fide found it very difficult to organize the early discussions on how to resolve the interregnum because problems with money and travel so soon after the end of World War II prevented many countries from sending representatives. The shortage of clear information resulted in otherwise responsible magazines publishing rumors and speculation, which only made the situation more confused. It did not help that the Soviet Union had long refused to join Fide, and by this time it was clear that about half the credible contenders were Soviet citizens. But the Soviet Union realized it could not afford to be left out of the discussions about the vacant world championship, and in 1947 sent a telegram apologizing for the absence of Soviet representatives and requesting that the USSR be represented in future FIDE committees. The eventual solution was very similar to FIDE's initial proposal and to a proposal put forward by the Soviet Union, authored by Mikhail Botvinnik. The 1938 Avro tournament was used as the basis for the 1948 championship tournament. The Avro tournament had brought together the eight players who were, by general acclamation, the best players in the world at the time. 
Two of the participants at Avro, Alekhine and former world champion José Raúl Capablanca, had died, but Fide decided that the championship should be awarded to the winner of a round-robin tournament in which the other six participants at Avro would play four games against each other. These players were, Max Yu, from the Netherlands, Botvinnik, Paul Karras and Salo Flar from the Soviet Union, and Ruben Fine and Samuel Ryshevsky from the USA. But Fide soon accepted a Soviet request to substitute Vasily Smyslov for Flar, and Fine dropped out in order to continue his degree studies in psychology, so only five players competed. Botvinnik won convincingly and thus became world champion, ending the interregnum, since Karras lost his first four games against Botvinnik in the 1948 World Championship Tournament. Suspicions are sometimes raised that Karras was forced to throw games to allow Botvinnik to win the championship. Chess historian Taylor Kingston investigated all the available evidence and arguments, and concluded that, Soviet chess officials gave Karras strong hints that he should not hinder Botvinnik's attempt to win the world championship. Botvinnik only discovered this about halfway through the tournament and protested so strongly that he angered Soviet officials. Karras probably did not deliberately lose games to Botvinnik or anyone else in the tournament. The proposals which led to the 1948 championship tournament also specified the procedure by which challengers for the world championship would be selected in a three-year cycle. Countries affiliated to FIDE would send players to zonal tournaments the number varied depending on how many good enough players each country had. The players who gained the top places in these would compete in an interzonal tournament later split into two and then three tournaments as the number of countries and eligible players increased, the highest placed players from the interzonal would compete in the candidates' tournament, along with whoever lost the previous title match and the second placed competitor in the previous candidates' tournament three years earlier, and the winner of the candidates played a title match against the champion. Until 1962 inclusive the candidates tournament was a multi-cycle round-robin tournament, how and why it was changed are described below. <laughs> FIDE system 1948-1993 1949–1963 The FIDE system followed its 1948 design through five cycles, 1948–1951, 1951–1953, 1953–1954, 1954–1965, 1954–1966, 1965–1967, 1965–1970, 1965–1971, 1971–1972, 1971–1973, 1971–1974, 1971–1975, 1971–1976, 1971–1977, 1971–1978, 1971–1979, 1971–1980, 1971–1981, 1981–1982, 1981–1983, 1981–1984, 1981–1985, 1981–1986, 1981–1987, 1981–1988, 1981–1989, 1981–1990, 1981–1992, 1981–1993, 1981–1994, 1981–1995, 1981–1996, 1981–1997, 1981–1998, 1981–1999, 1981–1992, 1981–1993, 1981–1994, 1981–1995, 1981–1996, 1981–1997, 1981–1998, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 1981–1999, 
Averbak, who was head of the Soviet team, confirmed in 2002 that Petrosian, Geller and Karras arranged to draw all their games in order to save their energy for games against non-Soviet players, and a statistical analysis in 2006 backed this up. Another contestant, Pal Benko, claimed that towards the end of the tournament Petrosian and Geller, who were friends, helped Benko with adjournment analysis of his game against Karras, who was the main threat to Petrosian. Korchnoi, who defected from the USSR in 1976, has never alleged he was forced to throw games. Fide responded by changing the format of future candidates' tournaments to eliminate the possibility of collusion. Beginning in the next cycle, 1963-1966, the round-robin tournament was replaced by a series of elimination matches. Initially the quarter-finals and semi-finals were best of 10 games, and the final was best of 12. This was the system under which Boris Spassky twice challenged Petrosian for the title, unsuccessfully in 1966 and successfully in 1969. Fischer withdrew from the 1967 Seuss Interzonal Tournament in the 1966 1969 World Championship cycle, after leading with eight and a half points from the first ten games. His observance of the worldwide Church of God Sabbath was honored by the organizers, but deprived Fisher of several rest days, which led to a scheduling dispute. In the 1969 1972 cycle, Fisher caused two more crises. He refused to play in the 1969 U.S. Championship, which was a zonal tournament. This would have eliminated him from the 1969-1972 cycle, but Benko was persuaded to concede his place in the interzonal to Fischer. FIDE president Max Yu accepted this maneuver and interpreted the rules very flexibly to enable Fischer to play, as he thought it important for the health and reputation of the game that Fischer should have the opportunity to challenge for the title as soon as possible. Fischer crushed all opposition and won the right to challenge reigning champion Boris Spassky. After agreeing to play in Yugoslavia Fischer raised a series of objections and Iceland was the final venue. Even then Fischer raised difficulties, mainly over money. It took a phone call from United States Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and a doubling of the prize money by financier Jim Slater to persuade him to play. After a few more traumatic moments Fisher won the match 12 and a half to 8 and a half. Topic 1972 to 1975 Fisher forfeits the title. Anatoly Karpov won the right to challenge Fisher in 1975 for the world championship. Fisher objected to the best of 24 games championship match format that had been used from 1951 onwards, claiming that it would encourage whoever got an early lead to play for draws. Instead he demanded that the match should be won by whoever first won 10 games, except that if the score reached 9-9 he should remain champion. He argued that this was more advantageous to the challenger than the champion's advantage under the existing system, where the champion retained the title if the match was tied at 12-12 including draws. Eventually Fide deposed Fischer and crowned Karpov as the new champion. 1975-1976 Karpov dominated the 1970s and early 1980s with an incredible string of tournament successes. He convincingly demonstrated that he was the strongest player in the world by defending his title twice against ex-Soviet Viktor Korchnoi, first in Baguio City in 1978 6-5 with 21 draws then in Marin in 1981 6-2 with 10 draws. His Boa constrictor style frustrated opponents, often causing them to lash out and air. 
This allowed him to bring the full force of his Botvinnik learned dry technique both Karpov and Kasparov were students at Botvinnik's school against them, grinding his way to victory. He eventually lost his title to a fiery, aggressive, tactical player who was equally convincing over the board, Garry Kasparov. The two of them fought five incredibly close world championship matches, the World Chess Championship 1984 controversially terminated without result with Karpov leading plus 5 minus 3 equals 40, World Chess Championship 1985 in which Kasparov won the title, 13-11, World Chess Championship 1986 narrowly won by Kasparov, 12 and a half to 11 and a half, World Chess Championship 1987 drawn 12 to 12 Kasparov retaining the title and World Chess Championship 1990 again narrowly won by Kasparov 12 and a half to 11 and a half Topic Split title 1993 to 2005 In 1993, Kasparov and challenger Nigel Short complained of corruption and a lack of professionalism within FIDE and split from FIDE to set up the Professional Chess Association PCA, under whose auspices they held their match. FIDE and the PCA each held a championship cycle in 1993-96, with many of the same challengers playing in both, and Karpov and Kasparov retaining their respective titles. Classical FIDE in 1993, Kasparov and challenger Nigel Short complained of corruption and a lack of professionalism within FIDE and split from FIDE to set up the Professional Chess Association PCA, under whose auspices they held their match. The event was orchestrated largely by Raymond Keane. Keane brought the event to London Fide had planned it for Manchester, and England was whipped up into something of a chess fever. Channel 4 broadcast some 81 programmes on the match, the BBC also had coverage, and Short appeared in television beer commercials. Kasparov crushed Short by five points, and interest in chess in the UK soon died down. Affronted by the PCA split, Fide stripped Kasparov of his title and held a championship match between Karpov champion prior to Kasparov and defeated by Short in the candidate's semi-final and Jan Timon defeated by Short in the candidate's final in the Netherlands and Jakarta, Indonesia, Karpov emerged victorious. FIDE and the PCA each held a championship cycle in 1993-96, with many of the same challengers playing in both, and Karpov and Kasparov retaining their respective titles. In the PCA cycle, Kasparov defeated Viswanathan Anand in the PCA World Chess Championship 1995. Karpov defeated Gata Kamsky in the final of the FIDE World Chess Championship 1996. Negotiations were held for a reunification match between Kasparov and Karpov in 1996-97, but nothing came of them. Soon after the 1995 championship, the PCA folded, and Kasparov had no organization to choose his next challenger. In 1998 he formed the World Chess Council, which organized a candidates match between Alexei Shirov and Vladimir Kromnik. Shirov won the match, but negotiations for a kasparov shirov match broke down, and Shirov was subsequently omitted from negotiations, much to his disgust. Plans for a 1999 or 2000 Kasparov Anand match also broke down, and Kasparov organized a match with Kromnik in late 2000. In a major upset, Kromnik won the Classical World Chess Championship 2000 match with two wins, 13 draws, and no losses. FIDE, meanwhile, scrapped the interzonal and candidate system, instead having a large knockout event in which a large number of players contested short matches against each other over just a few weeks. See FIDE World Chess Championship 1998. 
Very fast games were used to resolve ties at the end of each round, a format which some felt did not necessarily recognize the highest quality play. Kasparov refused to participate in these events, as did Kromnik after he won Kasparov's title in 2000. In the first of these events, champion Karpov was seeded straight into the final, but subsequently the champion had to qualify like other players. Karpov defended his title in the first of these championships in 1998, but resigned his title in anger at the new rules in 1999. Alexander Kalifman took the title in 1999, Anand in 2000, Ruslan Ponomaryov in 2002 and Rustam Kasimjanov won the event in 2004. By 2002, not only were there two rival champions, but Kasparov's strong results, he had the top ELO rating in the world and had won a string of major tournaments after losing his title in 2000 ensured even more confusion over who was world champion. So in May 2002, American Grandmaster Yasser Sarawan led the organization of the so-called Prague Agreement to reunite the world championship. Kromnik had organized a candidates tournament won later in 2002 by Peter Lecko to choose his challenger. So it was decided that Kasparov played the FIDE champion Ponomaryov for the FIDE title, and the winners of the two titles played for a unified title. However, the matches proved difficult to finance and organize. The Kromnik Leko match, now renamed the Classical World Chess Championship, did not take place until late 2004. It was drawn, so Kromnik retained his title. Meanwhile, Fide never managed to organize a Kasparov match, either with 2002 Fide champion Ponomaryov, or 2004 Fide champion Kasimjanov. Partly due to his frustration at the situation, Kasparov retired from chess in 2005, still ranked number one in the world. Soon after, Fide dropped the short knockout format for World Championship and announced the Fide World Chess Championship 2005, a double round robin tournament to be held in San Luis, Argentina between eight of the leading players in the world. However, Kromnik insisted that his title be decided in a match, and declined to participate. The tournament was convincingly won by the Bulgarian Veselin Topolov, and negotiations began for a Kromnik Topolov match to unify the title. <laughs> FIDE system since 2006 The FIDE World Chess Championship 2006 reunification match between Topolov and Kromnik was held in late 2006. After much controversy, it was won by Kromnik. Kromnik thus became the first unified and undisputed world chess champion since Kasparov split from FIDE to form the PCA in 1993. Kromnik played to defend his title at the World Chess Championship 2007 in Mexico. This was an eight-player double round-robin tournament, the same format as was used for the FIDE World Chess Championship 2005. This tournament was won by Viswanathan Anand. Because Anand's World Chess Champion title was won in a tournament rather than a match, a minority of commentators questioned the validity of his title. Kromnik also made ambiguous comments about the value of Anand's title, but did not claim the title himself. Subsequent World Championship matches returned to the format of a match between the champion and a challenger. The World Chess Championship 2008 was a 12 game match between the current champion Viswanathan Anand and 2006 champion Vladimir Kromnik. Anand convincingly defended his title in 11 games with 6.5 to 4.5. 
The World Chess Championship 2010 took place in April and May 2010, where Anand defeated 2005 Fide champion Veselin Topolov who defeated Chess World Cup 2007 winner Gata Kamsky in a match in February 2009 to determine Anand's challenger to defend the title for the second time. Fide has announced that after that, there will be a championship cycle every two years, beginning with the World Chess Championship 2012. The first stage of 2012 qualification, the Fide Grand Prix 2008-2010, began in April 2008. The final stage of qualification ended in May 2011, with Boris Gelfand emerging as the winner of the candidates' tournament and the right to challenge Anand for the World Chess Championship 2012. Anand retained his title by beating Gelfand 2 and a half to 1 and a half in a four-game tie-breaker round, after the two ended the 12-game series level. Anand lost his title to Magnus Carlsen in November 2013 in Chennai, India. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>